Well, still nasty weather outside, so today we're going to be working on our plan for manually controlling the 4L60E transmission uh, without having a computer. I like to try to come up with my own plan for things before I go see how other people did it. Usually it's a waste of time, but every now and then I come up with something that I think is better, and this is one of those times. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple different ways today to wire this thing, both that I think are better than what I've seen being used by other people on YouTube videos. Uh, I know I don't have the best production value on my videos. I know that I could be downright boring, but I think this is one of those instances where if you want the information, this is probably a good video for you to, to watch. Alright, we're going to start about talking about the wiring. It's going to be connected into your harness. Don't get too caught up on the colors. You know, they're going to tell you, you're going to do your research and you're going to find your A solenoid is supposed to be a green wire, your B solenoid is a yellow wire, your pink wire is for your power and a brown or a tan wire for the torque inverter lockup. As you can see on my uh, wiring harness there's not a yellow wire in the bunch and there's a whole bunch of green wires. There is a pink wire but it's not on the proper pinout. So all right, uh, the info you really need to know is your pinouts. Pinout A is for the A solenoid. That's convenient. Pinout B is for the B solenoid. Also convenient. E is for the pink wire where the pink wire normally would be which is your power and T is for your torque converter lockup that's also convenient and I guess if you think of E as electricity then we can make that fit also to help us remember Basically, all you're going to need is those four wires the rest of them we're not going to use but we're going to talk a little bit about that also in a minute you can just pull those wires to the side bundle them off put some uh, maybe some heat shrink around the ends to seal them I plan on pulling them out just removing them if I'm not using them I don't need them in there and then uh, there are plugs you can get you see there are some in here or just put some silicone in the open holes to remove the pins there's a gray cap in front I've already got this half one halfway out because I don't want to look dumb on uh, video just gradually pry that cap off and then if you just want to remove your your wires you can push from behind and pull them out all right what I'm gonna do since none of my wires are right I have extra wires left over from when I stripped down my blue connector to make the bench harness I'm gonna go ahead and put in what the book says would be the color wires for those particular slots just to make it more comfortable for uh, myself when I'm talking about it and for everybody watching. Alright, that's the only four pins we're going to need. Snap the cover plate back in. I want to talk for a second about the theory behind what it is that we are doing. I mean, we are taking manual control of an electronically controlled transmission. Uh, we're going for the obvious things. We're, we're controlling when it shifts and we're going to decide when that happens. But a whole lot of other wires are going to get bundled off and ignored or in this case just removed and they perform specific functions namely torque control and uh, the fluid pressure management so we should be thinking about controlling those things manually also I was talking with a friend of mine who is a top top-notch diesel mechanic and he's also pretty skilled at automotive stuff even though he doesn't care for working on that uh, you know, I was kind of running by him the concept of, of running this thing uh, manually controlled 
and his first thing was you got to let off the gas when you shift gears as if it was a manual transmission and uh kind of started laughing i was like yeah that's uh kind of was my way of thinking on this too uh you know especially after hearing uh one video in particular on youtube uh, you could hear the clutches slipping when the guy was was flipping switches uh and the guy was telling stories about our younger years and it turns out that we both had 700 r4s in vehicles that we had when we were younger and both of us would time the shift from first to second and let off the gas and then reapply it as the shift was happening because it just felt better uh i thought that was really really interesting that we both did that same thing uh i had an irock and i know when i if i didn't let off the gas it would shift harder you would like feel the you know the jerk when it made the shift but if i released it and reapplied the gas i could actually chirp the tires and so it was like you know just leads me to believe that uh by letting off the gas when we are manually controlling this shift are we really losing anything you know are we if we just flip switches and keep the foot mashed to the floor are we slipping clutches and damaging the clutch and at the same time actually losing performance because we're slipping clutches i don't really know i'm not smart enough that's why i said this is theory but i know that i plan to treat it like a manual transmission and let off the gas when i make the shift and reapply it no hey if i'm wrong that's okay well, i know for sure that that's not going to be any harder on the transmission clutches so just something to think about all right what happens is you hook up your pink wire to a switch power source uh, probably coming off of your fuse box uh, you want that to have a 10 amp fuse in it if you don't want to send more than be able to, to draw more than 10 amps through that line through your transmission that's going to send power into your transmission it's going to send power to solenoids solenoids a and b and your torque converter lockup solenoid and the power is going to come from those solenoids out on these other three lines when you send these lines to ground it will activate the solenoids engage them so all we need to do to activate the solenoid is get this wire or this wire or this wire any of those three to a ground source so we're going to use switches to control those so that we can pick and choose when uh, those solenoids get activated so we're going to insert switches and one side of the switches will receive a lead from these wires the other side will go to ground all right uh, how we're going to set this up is uh, what's going to be different from what other people have done so we are going to run our power in on that pink wire from there through the transmission the power is going to get disseminated to all of the solenoids we are using red indicator lights to replicate the solenoids so that we'll have a visual representation of when power is actually activating the solenoids all right from there the power will come out of the solenoids and go to the green wire the brown wire and the yellow wire we have our ground going to the chassis and just like on your vehicle the transmission will be the ground going to the frame and going to the body and so anywhere on the chassis that you touch any of those wires is going to activate that solenoid so all we're doing is running those through the switch so that we can control them we're going to hook those up to switches so that we can send that power to ground when the power goes to ground the solenoids will be activated when the switches are activated the appropriate solenoids will be activated all right get your grounds hooked up you can daisy chain them to each other one to the next to the next and then the ground i just ran individual wires all the ground because there's not much distance in here and it's pretty simple to do just as long as you get everything eventually to a ground you'll notice i put in an extra switch we'll talk about that in a second and that's what separates my idea from what you're typically seeing right now 
after the grounds are hooked up we'll hook up our power to the switches appropriately so what we're doing is making just a duplicate of the switch for solenoid A this switch just jumps over same exact wiring same positive we just make it go both places and go into the same ground so they accomplish the same exact thing All right and the reason we do that is when we flip it over what we're going to do is the first two switches we put in backwards so right now the switches are pointed to the rear they're actually in the on position the third switch is installed normally all right so it is in the off position all right we know that 4l 60e first gear is both solenoids on second gear we want the first solenoid to be off we're going to accomplish that by flipping the switch forward so even though we're at turning it off it feels like we're turning it on and we're moving from first gear to second gear so it feels natural all right and then we turn off the solenoid B switch when both solenoids are off we are in third gear all right again we're turning it off but it feels like we're turning it on shifting into third gear fourth gear is with the solenoid A on solenoid A is on we could accomplish the same thing with this switch turning it backwards to the on position and that's what most people have been doing but it just doesn't feel intuitive it doesn't feel right so even though uh, all right so this is actually off this is actually off this is actually on and then we just reverse the same way and now we're in first gear so we have first second third fourth torque converter lockup on a separate switch this method of running three switches would also work on a 4L 80E I'm not going to go over the pinouts for that you can look that up somewhere else if you're running that but the three switches will work you only want to reverse the first switch for 4L 80E so this switch is actually on even though it appears to be off all right so that's first gear with solenoid A on, solenoid B off. Both solenoids off is second gear. So we flip it forward, second gear. Third gear is solenoid B on, solenoid A off. Fourth gear is both solenoids on. And there we are. And shifting down, just reverse it. I showed this to my son-in-law. I didn't actually I didn't show it to him I uh, just told him my idea I came up with I was kind of proud of it you know it was like better than what I've been seeing online you know kind of just simple improvement but it feels a lot more intuitive and uh, he was not impressed he said that I could do better uh, kind of hurt my feelings a little bit but I set out to do better and so we have the next step in this I will say it's a better plan and I like it a lot better it's probably what I'm going to do at least initially in mine for our next style we have a dial switch with four spaces pretty obvious where we're going to go with that and we have a couple of momentary switches we're going to be utilizing a relay these are going to be for the torque converter lockup we'll just tease it a little bit here and uh, watch the next video and see how we manage to hook this up.